Brothers War collector boxes are $309.95 plus tax. On today's video, we're going to open a couple of these up. And thanks again to 401 Games here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada for making this possible. I wonder what amazing cards we'll get inside and did Wizards pack enough value in here to make it worth your money. I wonder how people will feel about the Brothers War set five years from now. Welcome back everyone, MTG Moxman here and thank you again for hanging out with me on my channel today. We're less than 200 subscribers away from hitting 14,000 subscribers. Thanks again everyone who's making this happen. To all my regular viewers, my Patreon members, my YouTube membership members, for everyone who leaves a comment, gives the video a thumbs up and watches the video, thanks again guys. Getting my channel bigger has always been a dream and now it's really coming true because of players like you. So let's get into the game here. Let's open this box and see what amazing pieces of magic we can find inside. And of course, a special thank you to 401 Games for allowing me the opportunity to open this on my channel. So here we have it guys, two collector boxes brought to you by 401 Games. Allowing me that chance to open these up on camera is amazing. Now we'll just uh, start tearing into these and get right at it. I'm hoping uh, that we can crack some amazing cards. You never know. A serialized would be pretty epic to get here on the channel. I'd be very excited if we happen to get that lucky. And you never know. So we'll just uh, open up and put one pack of boxes here. I'll put the box off to the side and we'll do the same. Oh, this is a pretty tight seal on that one. There we go. We'll get that one. I mean, when you think about the history of antiquities and you, you match that off against the Brothers War, I think they've got the, the appeal down to a T. I know we're going to be excited to see these. I know people are going to be buying the singles. But with the current climate against, you know, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, who knows how that will pan out. So let's get into this, guys. Let's see how well we do. Thanks again to 401 Games, man. Thanks a lot, guys. Allow me the chance here to crack these bad boys open on camera. Power Stone Engineer. Uh, I mean, I wonder how these foils will hold up, too. We're going to skip by a few, of course, because we know most of them. Ah, uh, the Dragon Engine. So cool, guys. Can you imagine this stuff? I can't wait to start exploring it on Arena. Getting out there. The Excavation. Oh, and the lands having the mechs. I got to be honest. I like the simplistic of the island but with the mech in the background it just kind of hits it reminds me of pacific rim come on guys be honest you're thinking pacific rim when you see it there we go mishra tamer of the makfawa hey we <laughs> double mishra okay we got mishra followed by mishra very cool it's like almost a cartoony art i know right all right okay we got the artificial dragon very cool oh there we go we got an ivory tower I actually am not very fond of this particular artwork, I'll be honest. I mean, great that it's, it's Ivory Tower, but it's not my go-to. Mishra's Bobble already banned in, what was that? They banned it somewhere already, I remember. Howling Mine! So cool. Okay, I ordered a whole bunch of these, I'll be honest. I gotta be honest with you guys. Cyclonus the Saboteur. Remember that from the uh, Transformers movie when they all get nuked? And then the, the old Decepticon planes get made into like some kind of flying guys. Very cool, like spaceship style. Vanguard Avi Aviator. It's still weird seeing that in there, okay? The Transformers cards are going to be a little bit off for me, okay? Now, I'm not going to organize these in piles on camera. I'll do that after when I return these back to the store um, because it just it takes time. I like to make sure I sleeve up the expensive ones and, and take care of stuff. Uh, no one left behind. Yoshin Tactician. See, like, it just... That's so Pacific Rim, man. Kaiju. Steel Seraph. That, this reminds me of like Mech Warrior style stuff, man. All right, Loyal Bodyguard. Very nice. Like that. See, th they look nice, guys. The artwork here looks amazing. I always said that. The the feel for the... Ah, spring, spring Leaf Drum. The feel for the set is very nice. Bone Saw. See, that I would not have put in here. I wouldn't have bought it with a Bone Saw. Uh, okay, Cycle. That, that's not bad. The Progenitus guy. Yeah, Gold Bug. Humanity's Ally. And these, these flip over, right? To, uh, there you go, Goldbug the Scrappy Scout. All the Transformer flip cards, right? Mishra's Foundry. Very cool. I mean, probably not the most expensive card, guys, but it's still very nice 
to see so many amazing cards in the set that harken back to the old days. I love that stuff. Now I'm just going to start speeding these up a little bit because I don't want the video running so long that people can't, uh, <laughs> can't enjoy it. And they're like, just move on to the next card. Move on, Moxman. Uh, again. Oh, there we go. Platoon Dispenser. Again, this kind of reminds me like um, the Edge of Tomorrow movie. Some of these things always remind me of movies. Ashnod the Uncaring. Very cool. The Icker Wellspring. All right. Jellum Tome. Bleh. Ashnod's Altar. Good hit. Nice card. I'm hoping to get... Oh, there you go. Prowl. Strategic... Oh, sorry. Stoic Strategist. Sword of the Meek. Try saying that five times fast. And no, not Sword of the Meek. Talking about Prowl. The Stoic Strategist. That's crazy. My tongue could not get around that word at that point. Get out of there, rapper. Oh, man. I can't wait to do a pre-release with this and just dive right in. Nether Island. I mean, oh, there you go. Stasis Coffin. Nice card. The Thopter Shop. <laughs> Sounds like a repair shop. Bonesaw don't care about. I mean, they look nice, though. The, the old style of artwork, guys, it is something to look at. The Foundry Inspector. The Door to Nothingness. Do you know how many times I tried to make this work? I mean, it's much easier now with the mana supply, but this was a card I really tried to break back in the day. Ultra Magnus. Oh, ho, ho! yes! A foil Mox Amber. Man, guys, you know what I'd like to do with this card right now. You all know it's true. So I may have to have a conversation with the store. Uh, yeah, very amazing. I mean, this card being reprinted is just epic. And you guys know, since I have the largest collection, I will be picking some of these up. Even at an expensive price, I'm going to be getting some. And you know what? I know that one. I know. I said I was going to do this later. But can't help myself, guys. Can't help myself. That's got to be sleeved right away. Sometimes you just, you got to break rank and say, I know I said I would do it later. But I'm not taking the chance of scarring it, marking it. Yeah, just something horrible happening. Because it's one of the pricier cards in the set. Hey, Lauren. Yeah, that's a nice card. Phyrexian Dragon Engine. Remember. We're going to get a half card there. We got a merge. We got a merge card. Very nice. I don't know how they'll do in the long run, though. Disciple. I wonder if we'll get like one of the... Oh, there you go. Springleaf Drum again. I'm still... Oh, there you go. Altar of Dimension. Very nice. That's the schematic one. Very cool. I'm really hoping... Oh, Star Scream. Megatron! I used to love that, man. I'm wondering if uh, we can get one of the actual serialized cards. I'm not super stoked for them but the idea of still opening one on camera of course is amazing you want that to happen i want to be able to say hey we opened one it says oh there you go the automaton assembler mishra's command why not you know we've got some choices there you can choose two the salvager okay there we go the cell i mean i have to really pay attention here again that millstone is not my favorite artwork when i look at that card guys it's not the big draw for me uh, adaptive automaton sure why not uh, again Hired Muscle does nothing for me. There we go. We got the Unwinding Clock. And I think, if I was right, you guys can correct me in the comments section. But I do believe that we can only get the uh, serialized cards inside collector packs, right? I think that was it. I don't think it's in set. I'm pretty sure it was only in the... Well, that is so cool, guys. That's Ravage, man. Does that come... I know I'm backwards here, but... that Just seeing Ravage was one of my favorite guys for the Decepticons. Ravage, eject. So cool. And I know the Transformers don't fit in here. It bothers me to no end. They could have made an entire set of a Transformer crossover, and we totally would have bought into that. Hercules Final Meditation. That is some nice artwork, and I kind of like the subtlety on the foiling down there. You can't really see it, but there's like little mini like overlay images that look very pretty. Queen Caleb in Krug. Oh, there we go. The Wood Collar Automaton. Love that artwork. There's just something about that. You see the little people in the bottom? You guys see that down there? There's little people moving around. And you have the giant mech. I'm telling you, something like that just gets me, just gets me going. I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to open this and play. The Astral Cornucopia. And we got Jetfire. Oh, man. I have Jetfire somewhere around here. I still have my Jetfire. What does it look like? But you notice I couldn't make them look anymore. Like the, uh, what do you call it? Oh, there you go. That's a nice one, too. Master Wizard. They couldn't make Jetfire look original anymore because they lost the licensing rights. So it couldn't look like one of the um, Veritech fighters from Robotech anymore. I miss that. I hope they do a Robotech movie. Or they could do a... Hey, if they do a Robotech secret lair, that is a secret lair I probably could not ignore. 
But right now, when you look at the Brothers War guys, good art. I mean, that, that one's selling a lot. Haywire uh, Might has tons of sales. Not as many as other sets. Oh, there you go. Diabolic Intent. That is totally going to go into my Commander deck. I'm going to buy that card. Definitely. Scholar of New Horizons. Pristine Talisman. I mean, it's nice to gain a life, but it's only colorless. It's like, eh. The Elsewhere Flask, sure. The Mystic Forge, another good card. Then we got, okay, Field Medic. I mean, I know these cards aren't very expensive. All the ping lands, right? The damage lands. But that artwork is very cool. I do like the way they make the artwork look. So how are you guys feeling when you're opening this? When you see me opening all these packs, are we seeing the value? Are we seeing what Wizards is bringing to the table to say, this is worth it for players? This has enough of a punch inside to make you want to go out and buy some. To make sure you've got the exact cards you want and some of the unique artwork and opportunities they're offering. Or do you sit there, Chromatic Star, I remember that. Right? Ah, the Revoker. Print, see, some of them I say have been printed too many times. I, although I love the old look. Hey, hey. Oh, had me going for a second. The Adaptive Automaton again. Right? Because we're almost done the first box. And you can see great cards inside. Although we haven't seen an Urza. Right? We haven't seen Urza yet. So let's uh, let's get ourselves an Urza here. Let's get this party started. I'm just looking at it from that perspective of where the value will be going forward. Some of these cards are going to lose some value. Some will start gaining as players find uses. That's very cool. The Burnished Heart looks very nice, by the way. But I wonder how these are going to actually pan out later on. Which ones are going to go up and which ones will fall? And will there be enough value to make this kind of collecting going forward worth it? To say this has enough value to say I should be buying these, holding on to some sealed. I should be buying these to get unique artwork. Or is it going to be fine with just like they did with draft boxes? Oh, there you go. Arcane Proxy. Love that artwork. Just so cool to look at. And the foiling looks very good on that. One with the multiverse. Everyone's talking about this card. It does cost eight though, but it may have it may have some use. Oh, Mishra's Workshop. Definitely not as good as Mishra's Workshop, but still, I like the idea of it. You don't know where it's going to go later on. The Soul Guide Lantern. Does nothing for me, although it looks cool. Burnished Heart. I like the original artwork better than the schematic. Well of Lost Dreams. Very cool looking. Aw, Soundwave. You're awesome, buddy. So cool to see that. I mean, I, I oh, there you go. Quicksilver Amulet, too. Quicksilver Amulet's good. So we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen Urza. We haven't seen some of the cards I expected to see. And we don't know where the values are going to fall, so I'm not going to comment on which cards I think are going to be spiking upward because that would just be a problem. You'd be lying to yourself if you think you knew exactly what was going to happen. You have to wait those, you know, got to wait at least a couple of weeks to see how some of these cards get used and where they fall. But certain cards in the actual set will do well because people want to have it for a standard game. Oh, wait, is anyone even playing standard anymore? That's right. I said it. People know it's true. Mishra, the eminent one. Very cool. Right? Is it actually happening? So that's box one. Let me just move this up over here. Thanks again to 401 Games. Now, let's get this part. Now, we had the cool foil. So that probably paid for maybe a third of the box if it was a valued card that stays high. But from what I've been hearing from people, there's quite a few out there. So we're on box number two. We're going to see how this one pans out. And see if we got more value in the first one or the second one. You guys can leave that in the comment section. If you're one of those people who can really, you know, disconcern values quickly. You know, I'd like to know if we got a good box or not. You guys will know better than me. Probably faster than I will. Soundwave Vault. That's, that's kind of cool looking. Like, oh, there you go. And the Foil Howling Mine. Very cool. And that's the, like, I guess the harder to get Soundwave, right? It does look cool. I just don't think they belong in this set. How about that? And I don't know if, I mean, I don't believe the Transformers cards will stay very high, but I just like looking at these sets and saying, I can't wait to play it as a game. I'm totally stoked to get out there and play some matches. I can't wait for the pre-release. Um, but but as, a, as a set that collect and have value over time, we don't know where these are going to fall right now. We don't know what the, the actual fallout would be in the long run. Oh, there you go. Right? We don't know how it's going to end. And that's okay. Not knowing how something's going to end means the story continues for a while. And I think Wizards and Hasbro, in that fourth quarter, when uh, things come to light, you might see some backtracking at that point. That's when they'll really start noticing. 
and we'll see how much damage was actually done from the player fallout. Because people talk a big game, we all are mad at them, we're all, you know, spitting some vile, but will it actually end up the way we think? Oh, Journeyer's Kite, very nice. Jetfire. Death Bloom, eh. Like the Power Stone stuff, by the way, since I just saw the Power Stone card, um, that may have some, some use later on. Just like treasures and just like clues, you know, with the right build in the long term, they're almost like they're, oh, there you go, Urza Salix. They're building mechanics for later. These can go into different sets. Oh, there you go, Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. Um, some of these things are going to find homes later on, and they're going to find uses in later sets. Not now, but 7, 8, 10 years from now, as they expand out magic sets. Oh, Platinum Angel Foil. That is so great looking in retro. I don't know if that one's worth money, but I'll check it after. I'll just put it in a nice neat pile. I just wonder sometimes how it'll pan out and if it's worth it to collect a collector box versus a set versus a draft. I guess it really depends on how you plan on enjoying magic going forward. A lot of players who are angry are talking proxies. More people are talking, I'm going singles. I'm going to buy these singles from a place like 401 Games. Um, and still others are saying, I'm just going to play with the cards I have. I want to see how this turns out later on. Sword of the Meek. Right? They're willing to... See, that looks so gorgeous. Like, that's really cool looking. But they're willing to wait. Well, people have patience. And not to mention with the economic downturn we're experiencing. And talk of all kinds of tech sector jobs being lost. I'll cover more of that stuff on Monday, guys. In the, in the longer Monday video talk sessions. But it is something that people are considering and thinking about. It does, you know, it puts a bummer on things. But for the set-wise, this is just epic. Haha, <laughs> Phyrexian... Per Okay, can you get a closer look at that? Can we get a good look? So gorgeous. We got Blaster! I have him in the background of my videos. Oh, some of the full art cards are so gorgeous. I mean, I assume not all these cards are going to hold value. Even some cards I think are pretty, I pick up sometimes. Just because I think the art is worthy of being somewhere. Even if it's just for me to display and look at later. It's so cool. You know, I'd like to see a set with no evolving wilds. Just for a while. No sets. Like a year or two. Don't do a single set with it. There we go. Urza the Prince of Krug. About time we had some Urza. It's like the cartoony version. Like I was watching an anime movie. And of course he's followed by Urza. And still we, we are enjoying the look of the old cards. But oh there we go. I'm pretty sure that's going to be worth a pretty penny. I know it's not the foil version. But still. Oh, okay. I know. I know. I can't be sure. Because I'm not looking at any prices right now guys. But. A full art foil of this is probably going to be worth a little bit. Wouldn't it be funny if I'm totally wrong? And you guys are all laughing at me right now at home going, Mox got it so wrong. Mox, man, pay attention to what you're doing. I know. These things happen to me all the time. Can't be everywhere at once. I'm not the most current guy in every little thing out there. That's called having ugh, a busy, busy schedule. That's okay. I don't mind at all. I still have a good time each and every day, and that's what matters. All right. Let's rock this one out. So, in the long run, we'll see how things pan out. That's always how it goes. In the long run. Hey, Blast Zone. Effigy. There we go. Self-Assembler. The Ornithopter. Winding Clock. RC. There you go. Kai's Command. And the next one. At least the packs aren't impossible to open. I think I only had one pack that gave me a stubborn time. But other than that, we're good. There's Mishra claimed by Gix. So we at least have one full art of the Mishra lo sorry, Mishra lost to Phyrexia. We have one full set because there's one in that box. So there you go. We got at least one. The Assembler. Still, I mean, ha, Megatron. Oh, Chromatic Lantern. I don't think that's worth much right now. Again, some of these things have just been reprinted too much. And Wizards has got to ease up on that if they want some value to return. Because it's going to take years to absorb the amount of cards they've been printing lately. And I don't think they're really going to throttle back any of their production runs just because we asked them to. They have to see it in the hard numbers and realize that they could just be mixing some of these sets together to get better value. The drum, Sigil of Valor, the key. Jetfire is quite common, isn't he? Keening Stone. All right, the last two packs, guys. We're almost there. And thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks to 401 Games. But thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me today in this bonus video. I just I wanted to put something out. And let you guys know, hey, still a great set. Great cards to play with and enjoy. And just open and experience this with friends. That's what it's all about. I mean, the game first really needs to come back. 
let the investing and stuff just like it used to. It, it kind of comes along as it goes along. Here's our last chance for uh, seeing if we get a serialized card. Do we get lucky? Is it going to happen? Let's go through. Hostile negotiations have started. I uh, hope it's not the bone saw. Not liquid metal. The semblance ample. I hope not. Uh, flame war, whatever. And Ashnods, nope. But it is a foil full art Ashnods. So I'm sure that has some value as well. So guys, thanks a lot for hanging out with me. Thanks for being here on the channel. Thanks again to 401 Games. You guys have an awesome day. Brothers War, man. We are going to have some fun with this set. And I think five years from now, people are going to look at this set entirely differently when none of the negativity is following things around. All right, let's have a great day, guys. Enjoy MTG Moxman, and I'm out of here. A moment of silence.